Ambika to going? Well, I think it's exciting. I think it's um, there's, there's a lot of excitement in the industry across Africa because unlike the first Ambika, everybody has a good idea now uh, what Ambika is about. Everybody saw the glamour. Everybody saw the excitement. Uh, those that did not enter wished that they did. And so I think Ambika 2 um, is, is, is going to be even more exciting because now people have embraced the idea. People trust the process. And I think across Africa, uh, there's, a, there's a real uh, desire uh, for, for the values that Amvika is, is propagating, that of professional excellence, that of reward for talent, uh, that of building training, that of um, uh, rewarding the audience, that of you know, projecting this industry that's that's employing so many young people from that's across the part Africa. That's the um, part for me is, is, is important. Um, you have persons like you voting, I mean picking you know what you think qualifies to be voted for and then the viewers voting for were you happy with, with the choices made last year? Well I, I, I'm happy that the process was um, trustworthy. I totally uh, celebrate anyone who is rewarded by an audience mm -hmm. for the excellence of their work. Yeah. At the end of the day, the audience are the final arbiter of all creative works mm -hmm. in the film industry. Um, I, I think it's really, it was really, really touching to see the reaction of the professionals. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it was it was a great way to get feedback on their work yeah. and to know that out there people long for what they what they have to give so for me it's not a question of, of was I happy or not I was not rooting for any particular yeah. and, and that's part of my role um, my goal and my role then was to ensure that the process were, had integrity and that both the audiences and the practitioners could truly trust that the results um, were honest and truthful and spoke, you know, uh, precisely. I mean, know. In, in so many ways, when um, Channel O was launched, right, it changed the way Nigerians did um, music videos. Yes. So, I mean, do you think five years from now we're going to see a clear change in our movies yeah. thanks to these awards? Well, I think we already have. The people who were making films this year have it at the back of their head, the possibility that they could win an AMVCA. Um, I think if you, if you saw the, the awards last year, uh, broadcast live across Africa, uh, you know, glamorous, beautiful, uh, it, was a, it was an incredible moment for any professional to, to be rewarded, uh, you know, among your peers and among your audiences. Uh, who doesn't want that? What that does is that it gives uh, anybody making film, anybody making TV, uh, you know, it gives them something to shoot for to elevate the quality of the works. And in five years' time, I'm very confident that, you know, uh, we won't be where we are today. That's for sure. Because, you know, people, people have uh, standards uh, that they would have to keep shooting for. And then we'll, we'll begin to see a, a certain elite group of filmmakers. And hopefully it is from those elites that um, our work can truly become globally competitive. I mean, when we talk about standards and this uh, new elite group of filmmakers you, you hope to see, mm. we we'll hear about the new Nollywood. You know, I mean, do you see that new Nollywood coming? Is it just... <laughs> Frankly, I, I do think so. I think that there is an awareness. Mm -hmm. There is a consciousness. Uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, if you played a Nollywood film, it was noisy. It was, the ambience was, was poor. You could see that the storytelling was raw. Mm -hmm. um, you can see today that there is a conscious effort to actually get the sound better. There's a conscious effort 
uh, in storytelling. Uh, the consciousness is what I think is key, which is why in AMVCA, training continues to be an integral part of the awards itself. And, and last, the last AMVCA, it was very exciting that you know we had a workshop on, on script writing and some of the stories, the, 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 the ways the stories are told, you know, was taught. And, and people gained a lot from those workshops, which they bring back into the industry. Um, there's bound to be much better work going forward. And, and I think it's important to be optimistic that the idea is not to create, you know, a sense of, of comparison to Hollywood immediately. Mm. This industry is 20, maybe 25 years old. Uh, Hollywood is 100 years old. Mm. What we need to be doing is what we are doing. Provide the platforms to in in incentivize the filmmakers. Provide the training to, to make sure that their talent, you know, uh, is honed properly. And, and provide a platform to reward, you know, the works that, that both professionals and, and audiences uh, find to be of, of excellent quality. I mean, you mentioned training, you know. Before now, Nollywood was run by apprentices, you know. You follow your friends with said, then you start directing a movie. But now you have, you have people who have been to film school who are doing movies. How much of that do you think helps change the industry? I mean... Well, I think the first thing first is that we all have come to accept that if we're going to be excellent, we have got to work on our abilities. We have got to take training seriously. We have got to improve the quality of the different facets of, of the industry. And what Nollywood succeeded in doing is interesting, making it interesting for young people to want to be filmmakers. And, and that's, that's a major, major success. Because some 20 years ago, if you said, uh, if you said to, to, to a boy coming out of high school, would you like to be a filmmaker? I'm not sure you will, you will get 10 out of 10 saying they want to be. Today, because of Nollywood, you have kids who actually see a career for themselves as filmmakers. The good news is many of them also understand the deficiencies of Nollywood at the moment. And so they, they are going into film schools, they are going into training institutions to properly empower themselves so that they do have that career, but they have that career you know, based on global you know, professional standards. Where I think the issue is for, for this industry is that we've got um, universities and tertiary institutions who continue to uh, have very huge big theater departments when in fact the business of theater is hardly alive and the business that is alive which is filmmaking we we don't have any um, 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 film schools and, and that's where we're trying to kind of switch things around uh, now you have University of Lagos you have University of Jaws you have quite a few of these institutions who are beginning to take a serious look at Nollywood, not, not as a phenom, but as, as something that requires the backing of academia. And, and I'm involved in quite a few initiatives where curriculums are being developed so that, you know, these institutions bring the power uh, um, of learning into, into this industry. It, it, it's um, going to get better and better because as you bring that in, uh, more and more people get the right kind of skills that they need. But beyond that, the basics come into play because you can't really be creative um, in, in a way that is at the standard is required globally today if your experience and your educational base is poor because it affects how well you think and the kind of logic, the, the kind of power to your logic. And I, I really think that that's going to come through as well. So the combination of all of that, of what's going on in training, uh, the combination of what's going on with AMVCA, and, and obviously the resilience of the industry itself, and now with the support that uh, the industry is getting from government, from the private sector, 
I, I think there's, there's room and there's reason to, to be optimistic that what you call Nollywood 2.0 um, no. will be here soon. One last question. Yes, so um, you, you were there last year, you're here again this year. Why do you think you were chosen? <laughs> I'm passionate about the industry. I'm passionate about the power of filmmaking um, to articulate our experiences, to articulate our culture. I'm a big fan of film, apart from the fact that I make film. I am a big fan of a lot of people working in the industry because I know what it takes to make uh, a film. And I am very protective of the creative process. I'm very protective of, of the, the, the filmmaker. I respect the work. And for me, I think that's maybe the key. Maybe that's the reason I agreed to take the job. I think it's very important that no matter what, the process has integrity, the process is trustworthy, um, so that those who win can actually be truly um, proud to have achieved, you know, something truly remarkable you know, with their talent, and, and obviously to be excited to take it to the next level. Uh, of course, you know that being um, on the jury means I can't win an EMVCA. So uh, for me, the process becomes uh, even more of a, of, a, of a mission to ensure that, you know, those who win uh, are truly the best and brightest that we have. Thank you.